really interesting time out soul winning um, today. Um, turn your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 23. It reminded me of, of this verse. Um, but uh, first of all, you know, we ran into, the story is that we ran into a couple of, of uh, two individual cr really crazy people. The second one um, probably demon possessed um, in my opinion. But the first guy, um, we walked into this guy's yard and we walked up and before we even got um, to the door, this guy came out of his house and just started yelling obscenities at us and calling us, uh, he called us uh, white nationalists. Um, Brother Alex was asking me what a white nationalist is. I, I'm not really sure. I think it's someone who's, uh, it's either someone who's a nationalist that's white or someone that's a nationalist that thinks maybe like only white people should live here or something. But um, considering the fact that most or, or a good portion of our soul group wasn't even white, <laughs> I don't even know that, that that even makes any sense at all. Um, but as far as, I'm not even sure the, the white nationalists exist, but um, I have, you know, anyway, so that's not really the point. But this guy's just screaming obscenities at us. And, the, you know, the thing to point out is, like, we had not even said a word. We had not said a word. We simply walked into, he saw people walking into his yard um, with Bibles in their hands or Bibles um, with them, and immediately was just enraged and started screaming things. Didn't care that there was women, didn't care that there was children. Um, you just have to notice this type of thing. Right? The, second, the second person was a lady, we never even saw her. Um, Jacob and I knocked um, on her door, and it was this lady just started screaming through the door um, in a very weird, like, raspy, strange, like, seriously, like, you know, horror movie type of voice about things about Satan and all of these types of things and, and worshiping the devil and all this kind of stuff. Um, and like, not joking, like serious about this stuff. We ran into this. I remember we ran into something very similar to this about three years ago when we were in the downtown church. Um, well, first of all, demon possession is very real, okay? Um, and, you know, we ran into this, um, and we actually met this person because I actually went back to this door and knocked on this door because I just wanted to see it myself. But the ladies actually ran into a situation where there was somebody like this and um, was just, you know, like, just talking to them face-to-face -face, like how they, and like quoting Bible verses. And before the, the soul winner had actually even handed this person an invitation, um, this person said like in this crazy voice, like, I'm King James only too, kind of thing. And like, just like, just, you know, I mean, obviously not of um, this world. But the point is, um, you're there in Jeremiah chapter 23. The point I'm trying to get at is why, why bring this up, right? I mean, we don't run into this all the time, but these are things that you are going to run into. And the thing that you have to remember is this. Look at Jeremiah chapter 23. Um, this is what this reminded me of um, today. Look at Jeremiah chapter 23 and look down at verse number uh, 28. The Bible says this. It says, the prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. Okay, so the Bible is saying here, hey, the prophet that it has my word in his mouth needs to be speaking that word. And he's saying the prophet that hath a dream, like, you know, God would give visions to his prophets. He's like, he better go and say those things. And he better be what? Faithful about it. He better go and do it anyway. But look at the last part of the verse. It says, what is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord. Now, chaff in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 13, you know, it uh, uses a different analogy. It, it calls wheat. It calls the, the believers wheat and tares, meaning weeds. But chaff is used to, um, to describe you know, people that don't want to hear the Word of God, people that are against the Word of God, things like that. The Bible here is saying, it's like, hey, you know, what is the chaff to the wheat? The chaff shouldn't matter. You need to go faithfully speak the Word of God. What you need to understand is that this is a spiritual battle. This is a spiritual battle, and it's very real. You know, it's very real. That's why you're going to see as you go out soul winning more and more, all you're going to see is just biblical truths just coming true again and again and again. It reminds me of, you know, the chaff. The chaff. So the point is we have to get through the chaff. We have to get through the chaff to get to the wheat. Right? It, it reminds me of a, of a combine. You know, this, this big harvesting machine that would really harvest wheat you know, that you would see all the time in, in the Great Plains in North Dakota. Um, I don't know if you see them that much here. But basically the way the combine works is it cuts the wheat down. And look, a wheat, uh, a, a wheat plant, one single um, 
plant of wheat is a large stem, a whole bunch of um, things that are surrounding the kernels, and then these big long tines that stick up. There's a lot of mass there that is not the wheat itself. So this combine has to bring this entire plant into the center of this machine, and there's this large called cylinder that grinds all this up, and it just literally, the reason that harvesters can harvest more now is because there's more horsepower that can be put into these machines because a vast majority of the horsepower of the combine is used to turn the cylinder, to grind up this plant, and to literally beat the chaff away from the wheat kernels. It literally separates the wheat from the chaff, and then it blows all the chaff. If you've ever seen a YouTube video or actually seen one going through a field, you just see this massive tan cloud behind the machine because the cylinder is grinding up all the chaff and blowing it out the back of the machine. And then it's dumping all the grain, all the clean grain into the hopper at the back of the combine. But all the chaff has to be, the point is to get to the wheat, you got to grind through all the chaff and that's where all the horsepower is needed. So that's, that's the spiritual example that we see today. You know, we see today. Look, that's not a normal thing that we saw today in Fresno, but that is something that we will see because in order to get to, look, we had a salvation today on that street. Literally, the house across from the first psychopath that we met, the person got saved. But you, we have to grind through that chaff to get to that person. And that's what we always have to remember. You got to grind through those. You got to knock. I mean, it's easy to say you got to knock 99 doors to get to the one that wants to listen. But there's some real chaff out there that, that needs to be gone through before we can even get to the wheat kernel itself. And that's why the Bible uses that great analogy of wheat and the chaff. And the Bible here in Jeremiah 23 is just saying like, hey, you know, I mean, we have to think like that. We have to think like Jeremiah 23. We have to go out there and we have to just be like, what is the chaff? What is the chaff? We had a salvation today. We had somebody, you know, accept the Lord Jesus Christ today right across the street. And the other group had another salvation today. And that's always the way it's going to be, but the chaff is there. And you know, the, the demon possession is there. Just we've got to grind through all that chaff. But look, um, to me, to me, I, I, you know, I don't want to say I like it, but to me, it's like I love seeing the Bible just come true in life. I love seeing the Bible you know, come, you know, the words of the Bible, you know, just be proven true again and again and again. And look, it just, you're going to, it's like, it, it's like the mysteries that we talked about unlocking this morning. As you go out soul winning more and more and more, like just more m mysteries are just going to be unlocked to you. You're like, oh, this reminds me of this. It's just like, the, just like, I was like, this reminds me of Jeremiah 23. It's just like these mysteries are just unlocked. You're like, man, the Bible's so true. The Bible's so true. You know, it's just proven again and again and again to you. But don't ever forget that, you know, I mean, this is a spiritual battle, and, and it's not like we're the only ones fighting it. Satan's fighting it, too. You know, Satan's fighting it, too, and he's got people. He's not just fighting for the same people we're fighting for. He's already got some people on his side. You know, I mean, that's not a normal thing for somebody to come out with, see somebody with a Bible and just come out and just start screaming obscenities no matter who's there. That's not normal. You know, something has happened to that person. You know, they, they've gone to a, the other side. There's people playing. There's spirits and people with those spirits playing for the other side, fighting, you know, that same battle with us. So don't forget that. 